Oh, your mercy never fails me And all my days I've been held in your head From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head Oh, I will sing Of the goodness of God Praise the Lord. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you are joining us from. We are glad that you're able to join us in our Monday morning empowering the week morning glory service. I want to appreciate God and the leadership of the commission for giving me this opportunity to lead us in our opening prayer. Straight away, we will 
go, we will get into our prayer of thanksgiving and we will be reading from the book of Psalms. The book of Psalms chapter 124 verse 1 says that if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, now may Israel say. Verse 6 says, blessed be the Lord who has not given us a prey to their teeth. We're going to appreciate God that Father, thank you. We come back to appreciate you this morning for not giving us as a prey to our enemies. We come back to appreciate you for being on our side. Open up your mouth. Let us begin to give him all thanks and all glory. Father, we appreciate you. We give you all praise and glory. You have been on our side this far, Lord Jesus. You have been on our side this far, Lord Jesus. You have been on our side. You have been on our side. You have not allowed the enemy to celebrate over us. You have not allowed the enemy to gloat over our lives, Lord Jesus. You have given us victory. The fact that we are alive today, the fact that everything, oh precious Father, concerning our life is becoming brighter and brighter, Lord Jesus. We come back to appreciate you. We come back to honor and appreciate your holy name. We recognize your mighty hand in our life. We recognize that you have been our right hand man. You have surrounded us, O Lord. You have gone beyond and above to secure and protect us. We give you all praise and glory. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. We will now be welcoming the awesome presence of God this morning to be in our midst. The Bible says in Genesis 39 verse 2 that the Lord was with Joseph and he was a prosperous man. We'll be going before the Lord and we'll say, Father, cause your presence to rest mightily with us in this morning glory service cause your presence to dwell mightily and richly with us in this morning glory service let us open up our mouth and pray Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we ask you, precious King, to cause your presence to rest mightily, to rest mightily, to rest mightily, both in the studio, in the homes, and in the offices of the viewers, wherever they're tuning from. Cause your presence to rest mightily. Cause your presence to rest mightily, Lord Jesus. Your presence gives peace. Your presence gives direction. Could we call for, for that awesome presence? Without your presence, Lord Jesus, this seems to be a mere gathering. Cause your presence, O oh Lord, that buts the difference to rest mightily with us this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. We will now be praying for our viewers and we'll be reading from the book of Psalms, chapter 42, verse 1 to 2. The Bible says that as the deer panteth after the water brooks, so my soul pants after thee, O oh God. We will be praying for the viewers and say, Father, cause a genuine thirst and panting for your word this morning cause a genuine thirst and panting for your word let us open up our mouths and pray father in the mighty name of jesus we commit the viewers this morning before your hands from the north the east and the west lord jesus that as they are wherever they are lord jesus the sense of urgency to attend to the things of god a genuine thirst and a genuine panting for your word lord jesus that they will be able to make the necessary sacrifice to meet up with the word of god that is forever sure and is forever true. As many that are still asleep, oh Lord, send forth your angels to wake them up this morning. As many that are caught up in, in diverse things, oh Lord, we call forth for a breakthrough. We call forth for smooth transmission. The things will work in, in their favor for them to be able to join and attend and partake of their word this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. We will be committing the servant of God before the hands of the Almighty this morning. And the Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 9, that then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. We will be committing the servant of God this morning. And we'll be praying, Father, Put your words in his mouth this morning. That as he stands forth to preach, that as he stands forth to speak, that it is the word that you have for your people in this season that will be ministered through him. Let us go before the Lord and pray. Father, we commit your servant this morning into your hands, Lord Jesus. We ask your precious Father, just like you put your words in the mouth of Jeremiah, put your words in the mouth of your servant this morning. Put your words in the mouth of your servant this morning. That as stands forth to speak, O oh Lord, that the word of the season will be passed to the people through him. That the word of the season will be passed to the people through him. Grant him grace. Grant him function. 
Pour upon him a fresh oil, oh Lord Jesus. Pour upon him a fresh oil, oh Lord. Grant him unction. Pour upon him a fresh oil. Put your word of the season in his mouth. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ that we have prayed. We will be committing the word that will be coming forth this morning into the hands of the Almighty. And we'll be reading from the book of Psalms chapter 12 and verse 6. The Bible says that the words of the Lord are pure words. A silver tried in a furnace of the earth purified seven times. We'll be praying, Father, as your word comes forth this morning, cause out to draw, cause it to draw out every debris and impurity in my life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let us go before the Lord and pray. Father, the Bible says that your words are pure as silver tried in a furnace. Precious Father, cause your word to draw out every debris and impurity in my life. Every debris and impurity in my life. Every debris and impurity. Cause it to draw it out, cause it to draw it out, cause it to draw it out, oh precious Father. Every impurity, cause the word to refine my life, to refine my life, to refine my life. It is pure, cause it to refine my life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that we have prayed. Let us go before the Lord and appreciate Him because He has heard and answered our prayers. Father, we give you all praise and glory, we honor and appreciate your holy name. Be thou glorified. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Shall we go ahead this morning as we lift our voice to appreciate the Lord for answered prayers Father, once again? Lord, we appreciate you. We exalt you. Thank you, Father, for answered prayers. We glorify you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm free indeed. In Christ, I'm free indeed. No chains are holding me, it's who I choose to be. I'm free indeed, I'm free indeed, in Christ I'm free indeed. No chains are holding me, it's who I choose to be. I'm free indeed, I'm free indeed, in Christ I'm free indeed. No chains are holding me, it's who I choose to be. I'm free indeed, I'm free indeed, I am free in Christ, I'm free indeed. No chains are holding me, it's who I choose to be. I'm free indeed, I'm free indeed, in Christ I'm free. I'm free indeed. No chains are holding me. It's who I'm meant to be. I'm free indeed. I'm free indeed. In Christ I'm free indeed. No chains are holding me. It's who I'm meant to be. I am free. I'm free indeed. In Christ I'm free indeed, no chains are holding me, it's who I'm meant to be. I am free indeed, by your blood I am free, by your word I am free. No chains are holding me, it's who I'm meant to be. I am free indeed, I'm free indeed, in Christ I'm free indeed, no chains are holding me, it's who I'm meant to be. I am free by the blood of Jesus, I am free by the word of the Lord, I am free, I am free, no chains are holding me. I am free indeed, I'm free indeed. In Christ I'm free indeed. No chains are holding me. It's who I'm meant to be. 
I am free indeed, I'm free indeed by the blood. In Christ I'm free. I am free by the word of the Lord. No chains are holding me. I am free by the word of the Lord. I am free. I am free. I am free. I am not bound. Hallelujah. Declare I am free by the blood of the Lamb. I am free. In Christ I am free indeed. No chains are holding me. It's who I'm meant to be. Let's go ahead and establish that we are free indeed. The blood of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus, we've been set free. No chains are holding us bound anymore. We are free. We are free. The proof of your freedom is that you are connected to this life trans transmission this morning. We have been set free. No chain has held us bound anymore. We are not held bound by any chain. Lord, thank you for setting us free. Thank you for your freedom. We celebrate our your faithfulness. We celebrate our freedom this morning. We have been set free by the blood of Jesus. We are set free from COVID-19. We are set free. Thank you, Father. By your precious blood, you have set us free from all forms of affliction, from all forms of limitation. We have been set free. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worshipped him. This morning, uh, I'll be leading us in a prayer. And our prayer topic this morning is uh, strength to finish strong. This is the last week of the month of August. God has been so faithful to us. It is not how we begin. How we also finish the month matters a lot. So we'll be asking the Lord for strength to finish strong. In Daniel chapter 11 verse 32, the Bible says, And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries. But the people that do know their God, they shall be strong and do exploit. Before we ask God for strength, we'll be thanking him for his strength that he bestowed upon our lives since the year began. We came face to face to diverse situations, diverse challenges that could have drained strength completely from us. But in his own way, God has sustained us. We'll be going ahead to say, Father, thank you for the strength you bestowed upon my life since the beginning of the year for the strength that God bestowed upon you. Lift your voice wherever you are and give him the glory. Lord, I thank you for the strength you bestowed upon me since the year began. I give you glory. I give you honor. I appreciate you this day from my heart, oh God, for your strength that you bestowed upon my life, for your strength to journey through the month from January until now, Lord, I thank you. It can only be your strength. It is your strength that kept me on the journey. Lord, thank you. I do not take it for granted. I want to appreciate you. Your strength that you bestowed upon my life since the beginning of the year that has kept me on my feet. I appreciate you. Despite the wind that have blown, oh Lord, I have enjoyed stability on my journey of faith because of the strength you bestowed on me. I have enjoyed stability in my business. I have enjoyed stability in the work of ministry despite the boisterous wind because of the strength that you have bestowed upon my life. I give you glory. I have enjoyed stability in my health despite all the happenings because of your strength that you have bestowed. Oh Lord, thank you. This far we have come is because of your strength, Ebenezer. We give you all the glory. We have enjoyed your strength in diverse areas of our lives. We recognize that this morning and we appreciate you, oh God. Thank you for your strength that has given us stability, that has given us stability. We give you all the glory. Minus your strength, we wouldn't be here today. Thank you for your 
strength that you bestowed upon our lives despite the uproar lord we appreciate you despite the wild wind of life that blew hallelujah jesus we are still standing because of your strength receive all the honor receive all adoration thank you mighty god in the mighty name of jesus christ we have given him thanks in proverbs 24 and verse 10 the bible says if thou faint in the day of adversity thy strength is small if you faint in the day of adversity is an indication that your strength is small and isaiah 40 31 says but they that wait upon the lord shall renew their strength we'll be asking the lord that father as I wait on you this morning, you know you've come this morning to wait on God so that you can hear from him. As I wait on you this morning, convert every weaknesses that I've brought before you to strength. Convert every weaknesses. As I wait on you, renew my strength. As I wait on you, as I sit at your feet this morning, Lord, renew my strength. Go ahead and ask the Lord. Lord, as I wait on you this morning, as I sit to learn at your feet, I ask that you renew my strength. Renew my strength. Father, as I sit to learn at your feet, you say, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They will fly, they will soar, they will not crawl. Father, renew my strength. Wherever I might have been crawling, Oh God, as I wait on you, renew my strength so that I can soar. Let me end this month in a grand style. Let me end the month of August via the renewal of your strength upon my life in a grand style. In the name of Jesus, as I sit before you this morning, let me leave this service with the blessing of renewal of strength. Let me leave today's morning glory with the blessing of renewal of strength until your strength is renewed there are steps in life that you will never take maybe there are things that god intends for you to finish this month of august that you have to at your feet this morning i ask for the renewal of strength let every weaknesses that i've brought before you today be converted to strength be converted to strength as i sit to learn at your feet lord as i receive your word this morning lord renew my strength renew my strength in the name of jesus renew my strength the strength to finish strong the strength to finish strong. Every good work I have begun, oh Lord, I will not slack behind. I receive strength, oh God, at your feet this morning to be able to finish strong. I will not have any pending project. By the strength that I'll be receiving today, I will not have any pending project. By the strength of the Lord, I will finish strong. By the strength of the Lord, I will finish strong. I will finish strong. Thank you, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. First Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 24. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24. It said, Know ye not that they which run in a race, they all run. They take off at the same time. It said, But one receives the prize. So run that he may obtain we are not running to go back as failures we are not running to end the month as failures we are running so that you and i can obtain and if we will obtain we need the strength of god that's what we'll be saying oh lord help me to run the rest that is set before me and let me finish strong help me to run and to finish strong by your strength help me to run and finish strong let's go ahead and pray lord by your strength help me to run the race that is set before me and let me finish the rest even stronger than how i have begun lord by your strength by your divine strength that i'll be receiving this morning help me to run the rest that is set before me and let me finish strong let me finish strong those who finish strong are those who obtain lord as i receive 
your in, the impartation of strength this morning. Let me run the race that is set before me and let me finish strong. Make kalatu shikahane ye kotuzia. Make koti bradoske kande. Lord, let me run the race that is set before me. Lord, and let me finish it strong. Let me finish the race strong. Let me finish the rest strong. Oh Lord, the rest that you set before me in this month of August. Lord, let me run and finish strong. Let me run and finish strong. Let me run and obtain. I run to obtain. I run to obtain by the strength of the Lord. I run to obtain my business breakthrough. By the strength of the Lord, I run to obtain my business breakthrough. Go ahead and declare that. By the strength of the Lord, I ran to obtain favor. I ran to obtain favor. By the strength of the Lord, I ran to obtain divine elevation in my place of work. By the strength of the Lord, I ran to obtain lifting. I ran to obtain lifting. I ran to obtain promotion. I ran to obtain favor. By the strength of the Lord, I ran to obtain my testimony. By the strength of the Lord, I ran to obtain. I ran to finish strong. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Why not go ahead and give thanks to the Lord this morning? By the strength of the Lord, we are running to finish strong. We are running to obtain the promises of God for our lives. I am running to obtain favor. By the strength of the Lord, I am running. Thank you, Father. We give you praise and glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Let's put our hands together for the Lord as we welcome God's servant to be a blessing. Hallelujah. We will all run to obtain this morning. Amen. In the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We will run to obtain in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, faithful Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for bringing us together. Amen. Thank you for the report we are hearing. Amen. Thank you for the great thing that you are doing. Amen. Your name be glorified. Amen. Your name be glorified. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. As I said, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We take this opportunity to thank God for what he has enabled us to accomplish in the course of last uh, program that we took. We had a great time. The name of the Lord be glorified. Amen. On the subject of making our way prosperous. Please take your seat. In making in the, on the subject of making our way prosperous, we want to glorify God because we had a wonderful time. Amen. 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 I say amen. 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 And today we are going to pick a different topic, which we'll be looking into in a few days. Uh, but before we do that, I'd like to welcome all of you that are online right now. I want to thank God for your life. And I'm sure you will get to know why I always thank God when I see you online. The rising of your companion is your rising. The growth of your neighbor is your growth. The growth of your follower is your growth. So I'd like to thank God for you being online this morning. I can see Pastor Sami, I can see Pastor Daniel, I can see Elizabeth Kaemba. I can see Angela. Elizabeth, I don't know where she has disappeared to. But thank God she's, uh, she's in a rural area. Maybe she's able to have access to internet. I'd like to thank God for Teddy O'Para and several of you that are online this morning. The Lord God of heaven will renew your strength. Amen. God is light. And every time you come closer to him, 
you begin to reflect his ultimate intention for your life, ultimate intention for your life. He say you are the light of the world, a city that is set on high, not on the valley, which cannot be hid. So every time we come on the table of fellowship with God, we are getting ourselves in a position whereby we can really reflect the light of God that we are on earth. And today, we'll be looking at a subject that is, I find it out to be very relevant to our generation. Very relevant to our generation. It is part of life that is fast fading away. Part of life that is fast fading away. And we will look at the scripture as God has enabled me to locate it or to understand. You know, the Holy Ghost takes you through some series of scriptures or what God is saying in his word to establish what he wants you to talk about. There is a scripture I look at here a few days ago and even this morning and then the Lord began to point to me certain things that are required to fulfill that aspect of God's promises to us. Uh, most of the time we know what God says he will do for us. And uh, but we fail to find out where do I position myself for this to be done for me. This is an aspect that is fast eluding our generations. You know, God is not just God of purpose. God is also God of standing. He's not just God of purpose. He's also God of what? Of standing. What do I mean by that word? Many people know God as God that blesses people. But they don't know God also have a required environment or provision for him to be able to do certain things in your life. There is a position. Somebody say, is it true? Yes. In the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve were somewhere, but they were not where they supposed to be. That's why he asked them, where are you? Not that he doesn't know their location, where they were, but that is not where they supposed to be. I pray that you understand this teaching. Because it will end so many frustrations in our life. There are so many things we get agitated about. And the reason why we are getting agitated is that we are not standing on the right understanding of that situation. Right understanding of that situation. So God is not just God of promises. God is also God of certain standing certain position so when he got into the garden to fellowship with man adam he said where are you that means there was where he knew where adam was but that's not where he's supposed to be and adam confirmed it he said i hide your voice and i hid myself in other words i heard your voice and i refuse to be where we should be where I refuse to meet you where I knowingly know we should be. When you say you hide yourself, is that you change the plan. And you will discover, as a human being whom God created, also to represent him and to have his image, to behave like him. When you promise someone, I'm going to give you a car. If the promises will be valid, 
you are likely to tell him the date, the time, the place. He must have a place he's looking up to as expected place to take the delivery. And that's one thing we need to know. Everything God promised us, there is a position, there is a, a standard that, upon which we must have what God has promised us. There is a standard upon which and the place where we are to take delivery of what he has promised. For example, God said, I will hold the hand of him that is blind and lead him in the way that he should go. That is a promise. In any area of your life that you are blind, in any area of your life, that when we say blind, we are not talking about physical blind. In any area of your life, you don't know what to do. God promised in his word. He said, I will hold the hand of him that is blind and I will show him to the way. I will bring him to a place <coughs> excuse me a place where he doesn't know that was a promise of God to us as his children. But you know God also said where we should stand for him to do that. He said call upon me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things. There is God's position and there is our position. The unity of this, the unity of these two positions is what brings about divine manifestation in our life. And that's why I want to take you through this uh, uh, great insight so that we can understand one thing that we need to know. There is always a position. You want to be prosperous, for instance. <laughs> God said he will multiply the seed sown. That was the promise. That was his intention. But you see, if God is going to multiply the seed sown, there is a position, there is an understanding that may exist within you. You know, that understanding simply implies you must have a seed or you must be a farmer. You must put something into the earth before God can multiply. Quite a lot of people have, uh, they walk in delusion and in frustration, not because they are bad people, but because they lack understanding. That is why Solomon said, Give me understanding and I shall live. The word of God is a, is a bunch of promises of life. He said, the word that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. So the whole Bible is a lifestyle. But now, and it's full of good lifestyle. But there is where to position yourself part time to experience each of the lifestyle that is in the Bible. For example, that's what I've just given to you. You are weak. God promised, he said, they that wait upon him, he will renew their strength like an eagle. He will make you strong. But now, you have to take the position of waiting on him. Until you are in a waiting room of God, God is not compelled to bring you strength. You see that? But our generation just know what God can do, what God can do. And, and then we became so ir spiritually irresponsible. Just like what you see, people talk, we all talk, uh, oh, government, our government is not good. Those are true. But we also know quite a lot. We evade tasks, we, you know, and government are depending on tasks to provide such amenity. There's always where God is to stand and there is where you are to stand. The unity of this stand is what but a supernatural life. We know what happened to Adam. His supernaturality was removed from there. That was the where, 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 where the supernaturality was, uh, was removed. They've committed sin. But I want to tell you, it's not the sin they committed that made the supernaturality, uh, the supernaturality to be removed. What happens include he broke the point of standing. 
He was not ready to face God. If we have stood where they're supposed to meet and said, God, I am here, but I have done something wrong. I'm sure God will have forgiven him. So when you look at your life, always know that you are not a bad seed, but you are just a seed that in certain, if you look at your life and you are not happy with your life, that doesn't mean you are a bad person. No. You are just a seed that is not in the right place of appointment yet. I, I want to drive this to you. When you look at your life, for example, you are poor, that does not mean God created you to be poor. When you look at your life and, and certain things are going wrong in your life, you are not that wrong. The Bible says we are the seed that the Lord has blessed. But every blessed seed must find the right soil. You are just not still on right standing with God. That is why you are there. Now, let me go straight. Uh, you will catch it later. Uh, uh, I, I, I begin to read from verse, verse 9 of Psalm 92. It says, For lo, thy enemy, O Lord, for lo, thy enemy shall perish. All the workers of iniquity shall be scattered. He said, But my horn shall thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. My eyes also shall see my desire on my enemies, and my ears shall hear my desire of the wicked that rise up against me. Now, Everybody, verse 12 is our key scripture here. It said, The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. And then, look at what it says. They are righteous. That's why verse 13. It said, Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the court of our God. Look at verse 14. It, they, it said they shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing. Verse 15. To show that the Lord is upright. That means he doesn't change his time. Amen. To show that the Lord is upright. Amen. He's my rock and there is no unrighteousness in him. Amen. Now, when you look at this, you will wonder on certain things that God is saying here. For example, an old man had no strength to say. An old man has no physical strength. We've always maintained, I want you to get it, we've always maintained that they that do know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do exploit. One of the reasons that we do exploit is that they are strong. But uh, spiritually speaking, it's not talking about physical strength. It's talking about spiritual strength. Now, what is spiritual strength? Spiritual strength means knowledge of God. Because the Bible says, they that increase knowledge increases strength. So when you say somebody is strong, you are simply saying that man has the knowledge of God. He know the tech, he has the technical know-how of the ways of God. They don't get they don't catch what I'm saying. So for you to be for you to be a man of exploit, for you to be able to do things, you know, do mighty things, you're supposed to have physical strength. I want to take you from there. Now, spiritually speaking, this strength is also available. And this strength is the depth of the knowledge of God that you have. So you are described to be strong spiritually when you have the knowledge of God. When you have the knowledge of God. So let's get back to our, our, our 
discussion. Now, the Bible said the righteous have flourished like a palm tree. And he went further. He said, he shall grow like the cedar, cedar in Lebanon. Research revealed that cedar of Lebanon are not just, you know, when they say cedar of Lebanon, this is cedar of Kenya. Cedar of Lebanon. You know, that must be, there must be something unique about the cedars in Lebanon. Now, the cedars in Lebanon were told is in one of the study that it's about 120 feet tall. That is a quite a tall tree. And at the same time, its circumference is about 30 meters. So very wide, 30 meters. That, that, that is not a common tree. 30 meters is quite big. The circumference is 30 meters. So what is the Bible trying to say? Number one, it says, the righteous will flourish, will excel like a palm tree. And then he said, this same righteous man, he shall grow like a cedar in, a cedar in Lebanon. Now, what he's talking about here is talking about a successful life. He's talking about an excellent life. He's talking about a famous life, tall. Tall. Where you are taller than everybody, you are known in the public. Where you come, they will know. He was talking about the said that the, the righteous will be the light of his generation. He will be a pace setter. He will be outstandingly outstanding. And then that's why he used the cedar of Lebanon to describe him in terms of flourishing. Now, and then he went further and said that lifestyle he will still bring it forward in his old age. Now, he will still be a man of exploit in his old age. You know why I put the old age there? In the old age, you are supposed to be at the mercy of the people around you. But this man, whom the Bible, the righteous whom the Bible is saying, he said even in his old age, he will still be in command. <laughs> he will still be what? in commands of the affairs of life in his old age and that is what Holy Ghost prompt me to find out what life style will a righteous man live that will make him to flourish in his old age flourishing in old age in command in charge man of influence and affluence in old age. And that is what I've been meditating on in the past last week. And God began to show me. And that is what I'll be sharing with us. In your old age, you, you, you will not be running from offices to offices. You don't have that physical energy. You won't have that physical to jump into your car, drive the way we drive now. No, you won't have it. <laughs> you won't have it. So what will you be using to maintain relevance and significance? What? That's what I want to share with us. Just, uh, I think last week, I just jumped into the, my car in the morning and drove to my lady to see the church construction that is ongoing in Mali, our church construction. And then I drove, I came back, and when I came back, I was fresh. I will not be able to do that in 100 or in 90 years. I will not. My physical, my physical strength will have, will have, will have been abetted, according to King James English. He say the strength of Moses was not abetted. But what is it that I will be using in my old age to still maintain relevance? And that is what I want to show us. And that is the power we'll be looking about. The power. Of relationship. The righteous will have cut out productive and effective relationship in his youth that even when he's old, 
that relationship will be his strength. We'll be looking at this subject as we journey in the next one week or two weeks, the power of relationship. Building solid relationship. Relationship. We'll be looking at the, the place of relationship in the life of a believer. The power of relationship. Praise the Lord. Amen. I said, praise the Lord. Amen. When you look at the palm tree, every part of it, because he, he talk about the flourishing, every part of palm tree is economically useful to human race. Every palm of palm tree. I will not go into detail, but there is no part of palm tree that is not an economic asset to humanity. Every part of palm tree. It's a plant that goes be, you know, its fruit is useful. The water inside it is useful. The, the, the plant itself is used for rafter to roof houses. Every part. Palm tree alone produces two types of oil. It's a refinery. <laughs> so, uh, so when God used one word to describe the righteous, if you want to enjoy what God is saying, you need to take a personal study of that thing. Because God, he didn't say it shall be like a grass, lemon grass, the which everybody will be trodden on. No, he said it shall be like a palm tree. So there must be something unique about palm tree. And one of the strengths of palm tree is ability to stand a tough weather. A tough, tough, tough weather. Drought, palm tree will survive. Every other plant will wither, but not a palm tree. It takes time. And it lives for years. What does that mean? God intends for you to live long on the earth. Palm tree <laughs> They can live for many years. Many years. But what is his strength? Palm tree build strong relationship in his domain. He build strong relationship in his domain. I don't think we can count the root of a palm tree. It's very difficult. If you have ever seen one, most of you have never seen it anyway. Because of your generation, you don't go to farm. When you see a palm tree, if you say this, the root, if you say there are one million, I can say you lie. One plant has over one million roots to go to the earth, depending on the size. And you know, on each side, on each side of it, he does not just have one root on this side. No, he will arrange them in such a way that no matter the height of the soil to the, to the, to the stem, he have root going on different layers of the soil. And that's how he will arrange it around itself. Did you understand? That means on this side, if the, if the soil level, if the soil level is down, he has a root there. The soil level on the top layer, he has a root there. He has a root till he reach, you know, if you, I wish I could have a drawing. I think I will start ministering with drawing now so that you can catch what I'm saying. At every point, at every layers, about two, I mean, it's not one centimeter, about two centimeter, two or three centimeter layers of soil, palm tree has a root. Do you understand what I'm saying now? The, the difference between one, the distance between one root and the other is less than five, is less than two centimeters. If you know, that will tell you. That's how it arranged. And it can arrange that for almost, uh, for almost three meters or two meters to the soil. So it's in deep relationship with the surrounding. Deep relationship with the surrounding. So hardly can any nutrient go unutilized. 
That's why when the drought comes, it doesn't affect him. Why? If, what, if this layer had no strength, the other one on top has strength, has, has nutrients. If that layer has no nutrients, the next layer, maybe there is. If the top where the, the, the drought has heat, are heated badly, and there is dryness on the surface, the down one will supply the nutrient for the whole plant. Did you see how it operates? Now that is what we are expected to do. To build relationship, solid relationship around us at various levels. Be able to speak to the king. Be able to speak to average man. Be able to speak to the poor. Have relationship at all levels. That is what palm tree does. And that's why it survived the storm of life. We have a lot to, to, to do here. You know why many politicians, for example, rise and they come flat? When they were coming down, there was no poor to give them their back to stand up. The poor voted them to power. But as soon as they get to the top, maybe a house of representative which we call parliament the lower house when they get there they don't make friends with MCA anymore they don't make friends with voters they only come after four years to make relationship with the voters and that is why they don't last because you can imagine some people have stayed in those houses for four years, and after ten years, they have no relevance there. You know why? They never build relationship. Parent, many of us have made this mistake in our life. And that is where you are, you are where you are. I promise you, leave witches alone. Witches may take advantage of that to deal with you. But that is the on the, your own undoing that make them to succeed. You never build relationship. You were self centered Life was all about you. You are all, you. Uh, it's you, 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 and you grew up like that without building relationship. And that is why you handle your problem alone. Let me say this to you. Please take it raw. As I was dressing up to come to this uh, broadcast, the Lord ministered something to me. He said, tell my people, everything they lack and they desire is in the relationship that they have not built. Everything you are looking for in life, you desire it, you want it, but you don't have it and you desperately have a need of it. You know where that thing is? That thing is in a relationship that you never care to build. Honestly. That thing is in a relationship that you never care to build or you build it and you mess it, you mess it up. I was talking to one of our elderly pastors a few days ago. I saw her miss call and I picked the call. And she told me her issues. I will not mention her name. She told me her issues and he said, I needed this amount of money. This is what I have. He needed some money and she needed, and it's quite lossome to her. And immediately she finished her story. I said, Will you be in church? Can you make it to church on Sunday? Listen to me and listen very well. My daughter can ask for that amount, I will not give. Not because I am wicked. 
I may have my reasons. But when that old woman asks, it is an amount that I am more than. But the fact that I'm more than it will not make it to leave my pocket to her. The relationship that existed between me and her. The relationship she has built over the years with me. I remember I knew this woman long time ago. Far back to maybe uh, 2000, uh, 1990, uh, 1998 or year 2000. When I was pastoring Winners Chapel. When I went back to Nigeria, hear me and hear me well. That woman will send me mail. It's an elderly woman. If I'm not mistaken, email were very scarce then. That was when email was coming. But I don't know where she was getting it, getting the opportunity. It's an elderly woman. She will send me email. When I came back to Kenya to start uh, the assignment I'm running right now, that woman could send me 100 shillings. To every month, he sent me 200 shillings. 200 shillings. I'm sure that is, uh, that is less than $1. She has built financial relationship with me over the years. And now what she has a need of is in thousands. Let me say this thing. Your wealth is in your relationship. Your peace is in your relationship. Your protection is in your relationship. Your deliverance is in your relationship. You see, I mentioned it there. Obasanjo was to be killed by another president who was there, Sani Abacha in Nigeria. For those of you who are familiar with history, he was already incarcerated. He was in prison. It was said even the day of his execution has been fixed. And then Abacha died. And then Absalom came to power. Who took over from the man who have signed his death sentence, came to power, and it happens, Obasanjo, when he was a president, military president, this Absalom who came into power was one of his junior staff. My friend, today it is your turn. Tomorrow it will be somebody else's turn. But when it is your turn, may you build relationship with those who will occupy the position in the future. And Abbasanjo Salam came and released a man that had been sentenced to death. And look at what happened to Abbasanjo after he was released. Eventually, he became a president and ruled Nigeria for another eight years. A man who was supposed to go to the grave came back to rule the whole country because of the power of relationship. Life is run and maintained by relationship. Life is run. Life is, let me say this, life is ignited. Let me get them well. Life is ignited by relationship. It is sustained by relationship. It is run by relationship. You were born, you are a, me and you are a product of relationship. Our father and our mother. In a part of Africa, of course, they are not supposed to be from the same family. They are from different family. They came together of different age and they produced you and me. Friends, the life they gave us, we are going to run it and sustain it by the same force that brought it up. The force that take up a plane is the force that, that sustain it and the force is the one that make it to land safely. Many lives are in jeopardy today because of lack of understanding of the power of building a relationship around their destiny. Relationship. Relationship is the salt of life. Salt of life. 
where it failed to exist, there will be bitterness. There will be what? Bitterness. Check all as I say, it's a relationship that went sour. As I, check all as a relationship. It's a relationship that went sour. It's a relationship that went sour. That is what the Bible is talking about here. That, he want, that is one of the things he wants us to consider if we want to bear fruit in our old age. If you want to go to maintain relevance in your old age, this is the thing, one of the things, God, one of the, one of the requirements. You must build around your life like a palm tree. You must build around your life solid relationship that can supply the nutrients of life that you require at every phase of your life. I school with a lady. We entered school, secondary school, 1979 together. We were in the same class. We were friends. And we parted with 1984. And then she happened not to have made her papers, but she was a brilliant lady. And I encourage her, no, 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 you, go, you, you know, don't, don't just, don't go and learn, a, a, don't go to vocational training for because you failed this paper. We all know that you are a brilliant student. She was a science student. Go back to school. She, because of her relationship, she hid to that council and went back to school and later came out with seven good credits and went to university. The lady I'm talking to is a doctor today. She's a doctor today. And uh, she's the head of the department of a, of a university, a very prominent university in Nigeria. And at one time, my nephew, who wanted to do her master, was stranded. And I just, just a telephone call. She has tried all manner of things. They've looked for minister. They've looked for commissioner to talk. They've looked for people, great politician to talk. And it, it proved full time. But it just called me, cost me a phone call. I said, by the way, so so person said he's studying her brother. He'll soon be back home. And I just called. Ah, she was happy. Or not, it was not, in fact, the, the, the phone call lasted for about uh, 20 minutes. But the main issue for calling took only less than two minutes for me to get an answer. Two minutes. It was just by the way. It was not the main thing. After we cracked joke, where have you been? All, uh, you know, old stories. And then I said, by the way, uh, my, my nephew wanted A, B, C, D in your school. Ah, he said, well, so where is he? Why is he still at home? You did to give me my number. It, you know, it was not that day voice that was speaking. It was voice of many years. You didn't hear what God said about Abel after she was killed by his brother. He said his blood, the voice of his blood was still speaking. But you know Abel have good relationship with God. He brought a very qualitative sacrifice. And God was pleased. He, was, he pleased God before he was killed. And that's why his voice could still speak from the ark. If you only speak where you are present, you are as good as being a dumb man. If all where you speak is where you are present, you are dumb. You know a dumb? A man who has no voice. Can your life speak in some city? Can your life speak where you are not present? Because there are too many things connected to you that you, you are not able to, you are not likely to be able to be present at all times. You remember the prayer that David prayed? He said that the Lord will perfect all that concerns me. One of the forces that help God to bring to perfection all that concerns you is your ability to build a good relationship. The first day my daughter entered school, she got... <coughs> The first day the mother took her to school to look for a primary school in Oshobo to, to register her, there was somebody there who said, this person, he looked like Pastor Wally. And that same day, he hasn't got admission, he has got scholarship. 
What is that? It's not the gas life. It is the relationship I have built. One of the greatest problems we have among the blacks in Africa is that we don't value relationship. Some of us, our father built trouble. You know that you started having war with your stepmothers, with your stepbrother, with your stepsister. Instead of having leverages from there, from your father's house, you started by responsibility. Let's build relationship. Let's build relationship. Don't forget, among many things I've said today, the money, your money is a relationship. <laughs> The house you needed is a relationship. <clears throat> tell me the mountain that you want to climb. I will tell you if you have a relationship, you will climb it successfully. Tell me the value of life you are in. If you have relationship, you will come out of that valley. May the Lord bless you this morning. It's never too late. That's why God is asking me to talk to us on this subject. Start building relationships. Relationship break bureaucracy. You know, life is full of bureaucracy. You must fulfill this, you must fulfill that, you must fulfill this, you must fulfill this before you get this. When you have solid relationship, relationship will be override the power of bureaucracy. And your right and your deal will be given to you. Let's build relationship. Let's build relationship. I led a man to Christ in this country, Kenya, many years ago. I led him to Christ, and he gave his life to Christ. And I left the country. When I came back, by the time I'm coming back, he was already a big man in the council. And when I needed to put a signboard, he simply showed me what the constitution has to do with religious organization. You don't need to pay for this pastor. Which we have been paying for. We have been treated like corporate organization. And sometimes we could even be denied. Because he was an insider. He was able to show me what the law says. And by his power, he prevailed over the council in which he sit. And we were given letter. We were able to put our billboard without paying. She's late. He's late now. May, they, may his soul rest in peace. Amen. We're able to put our billboard everywhere where, where we intended to put it. But I led him to Christ. Don't run after money. Run after relationship. There are places you bring out money, they will still shoot you. But relationship is a voice that cannot be quenched. It's a voice that cannot be silent. I will show you it's not easy to build relationship. But I want to talk about the good part of it today. Relationship. And we have our signboard in a prominent part of the city. And you know that is already an advantage. Do you know that? There are places where people see your billboard and they believe that you are powerful to have put a billboard here. Because that's what the Bible teaches me and that's what the Bible says. It says, a man becomes famous by how he lay an ass upon a tree. Relationship. Relationship. I had a relationship with a man who was in problem, an ordinary banker who was in problem. And... Uh, he, was, he had a very rough time. And some, by, somehow I, I came in at the right time into his life as a minister of the gospel. I mentor him. He's the one who took me to a state house. There are ordinary men on the street that can take you to a state house. Ordinary men on the street. We saw it the other day in our nation here in Kenya. The vendor. The vendor. What did I say? That's a professor. Vendor. You know who they call vendor? People who sell newspapers of daily, uh, what do they call it? Nations, standard if you are in Kenya. The vendor on the street, who stand by the street, probably not having a, a cover shoe. 
the vendor of President Uhuru was invited to State House. You know what happened there? When your relationship rise, you will rise. We were told that that man has been his vendor for many years when he was an ordinary citizen. And when he became the president, I think on the swearing day, the man was invited, the vendor. With all your professors, many of you were not invited. All your master and uh, servant degree, you do not only have master, <laughs> you also have servant. You were not invited. In closing today, you saw Mephibosheth in the book of Samuel. For Samuel, you saw Mephibosheth. He was a lame man. He had no good legs. And it's anathema for such man to sit in the palace. When you are lame, you'll be in hiding. A rich man don't want bought around their life. They go and hunt for the best look. Have you seen where they employ a, a girl that is a cripple, that is a cripple to serve tea in, this, in the office? They don't. They are not the one who made themselves cripple, but that becomes a stigma. Mephibosheth was, a, was, a, was, a, was lame. And he was living in the house of one of the servants of his father. But you know what happened? Because of the relationship that existed between Jonathan and David, when David got to the throne, he said, who is there anyone remain in that family that I may show him kindness? Mephibosheth never went to war, but he was whining and dining with the king because of the relationship between Jonathan. Jonathan. Let me close by leaving you with one hot word. You see this head. You see I'm touching. I'm, I'm touching because I know you are viewing me. You see this our head. It's on our journey. And only God knows where he's going. Don't despise anyone. I repeat. This head that we carry is considered in my place as our destiny. Uri head. Your star, that's what they take to this. You know, this one determines everything. If they remove your neck, you are gone. All the five organs are connected to the head. So this is uh, a, a symbol of your destiny. And you see, as we carry it moving around, only God knows where each one of us is going. Some head you see in your classroom, they are going to state house of their nation. Some head you see are going to occupy somewhere in UN. So, as everybody is carrying this head around and you meet with them, relate with them very well. Stop being arrogant. It is the turn of your head tomorrow. It will be the turn of somebody's head tomorrow. It is your turn, it's the turn of your head today. It will be the turn of somebody's head tomorrow. And you will still be alive. I know that you will have gone down, but you see, every generation has his own hype. hype. So it is your star shining today. You don't know whose star will be, shine, will be more shining than yours. So now that your own is shining, behave like a palm tree and develop networks of relationship to surround you. So that when the storm of life come to blow you off, you get, if you blow you this side, there is a support. If you blow you this side, there is a support. If you blow you front, there is a support. If you blow you backward, there is a support. So stability is tied to relationship. May the good hand of God be with you. May you succeed in all you do. May you prosper this week. Build relationship. It is said that the greatest thing today is to belong to a network. What is network? Relationship. May the good hand of God be with us. As we face this brand new week, May the Almighty God that make His word new and the word has come to you today, may He make today new in your life. May new things begin to happen. Value a sweeper. Value a drunkard. Value a righteous. Value a priest. Value your father. Value everyone and build relationship 
sincere relationship as God will give you the opportunity. You are dead this morning. You are not born again. I'm calling you to build relationship with Jesus. He died for your sins. And he died for my sins. I have received him for many years. It is your turn if you are not born again this morning. To receive the perfect work of Calvary that was done in your favor. And if you are willing this morning, I will just pray this prayer with you. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I invite you into my life. I am a sinner. Forgive me my sin and my trespasses. I confess you with my mouth because I believe in you. I confess you as my Lord and my Savior. Write my name in the book of life and give me hope of eternal life. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. And there are many of us who are there this morning who have heard the word of God. We'll be looking at different areas of building relationship. I want you to build relationship with God today with your finance. Build it with the work of God as a child of God. Remember, I said, whatever you are looking for is in your relationship. Your prosperity is in your relation, is there is in the relationship, your the relationship of your money with the with the kingdom of God. As you bring that offering this morning, the the, 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 the Mpesa pay B number. Uh, the platform that enable you to give if you are in Kenya and also our bank account is here please endeavor to do the right thing accordingly father in the name of Jesus thank you for everyone thank you for the word that has come this morning we became who we are when you cemented the relationship with us through your son Jesus Christ and we have never had a better yesterday it has always been a, a, a glorious day each day we wake up and come and, and visit you. Father, thank you. Accept their offering. Use it for the advancement of your kingdom. Prosper every giver this morning. You said in our relationship, when we give you, you multiply it back to us. Multiply their seed in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you, faithful Father. In Jesus' precious name. Have a fruitful week. The journey begins from this minute. Begin to build relationship. God bless you and have a fruitful week. Amen. Let thy 